everyone. It's me. I'm back again. I um, know it's been a while since I've done a video. And the reason for that is because I had a health scare. And I want to tell you guys all about what happened to me. Um, so um, a few months ago, I got a full health checkup with blood tests and all. And uh, my kidney markers were a bit off. And I thought maybe it's because I was not having enough water. And I thought maybe... Um, you know, I wasn't hydrating myself enough. So I said, okay, I'll start having more water and everything will be fine. And then around that time, I also, I was doing urine therapy. So I said, okay, the urine therapy will be great for this and everything will be fine. Nothing to worry about. So then I took um, two months of doing all that. I think two, three months, two months of doing all that. And then I took another test and my uh, numbers were just dropping like a rock so I was now at stage three kidney disease um and I was like um really scared because I didn't really know what was going on so I went and saw all the doctors I saw western medicine doctors I saw homeopath I saw ayurvedic doctors I saw urine therapist uh doctors and I said well what is going on with me and why is this happening and they couldn't figure it out because usually people that have kidney problems are usually people that have high blood pressure or diabetes or some underlying condition and you know they kind of looked at my lifestyle and thought like why are you having kidney problems so they couldn't figure it out and a lot of them told me well you you don't look like a kidney patient and then they said well if you're doing yoga you shouldn't have kidney problems and I got all these things coming from them and I was like okie dokie so anyways my markers were going down and so then I um uh I started on home uh homeopathy medicine and then I started taking that and I said okay that should be okay you know I didn't want to do and put any like you know western medicine drugs into my system so I said okay homeopathy will be good and the reason why I was doing that is because my my numbers were dropping dropping like a rock so I was like okay and so I started doing that I said okay I'll do that I'll do the urine therapy and I'll do the water and everything will be okay and then a month later I took the test again and now I was very close to stage four kidney disease which is when they start telling the patients about dialysis and start talking to you about you know your kidneys failing now you need to go on dialysis I was very close to that and I was like you know what two more months of my numbers dropping like this because my numbers were dropping so quickly and I was like two more months of this and I'm going to be on dialysis I mean and then I was <clears throat> I was facing death like I was like I'm gonna I'm dying and 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 so I um I mean, I didn't have any of the symptoms. So the doctors would ask me, I mean, do you have, normally when you are having kidney issues, you have swollen legs or like, you know, certain side effects of the kidney not working. Maybe you feel tired and all that, but I wasn't feeling any of that. And so they were a little confused. They sent me off to do a bunch of tests. All the tests came back. All the other tests came back. Okay. Like they did a scan of my kidney and my organs and everything came out. Okay. And so, so they couldn't figure out what was going on, but regardless it was something worrisome because my numbers kept dropping during this time I was an emotional wreck because I was like what did I get myself into is was it this lifestyle that caused my kidneys to start failing because they were just rapidly shutting down um, according to the numbers they just were dropping 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 to the point where two more months and I'll be on dialysis and I was just feeling so horrible that I did this to myself good and some of the doctors are like yeah we don't know it's worrisome that the, that the that your your kidney function is going lower and lower and so it is something of concern because if it was a steady number and it was like low then they'd be like okay but it was dropping so quickly that it was it was a concern um for everybody um but nobody can figure out why so I thought okay it's my lifestyle <clears throat> I thought and I'm letting people down, all my loved ones down, my son, I'm letting my son down. I just, um, then I was like, okay, well, I started looking at life differently. I started looking at other people around me whose kidneys were working just fine. And I was like, what happened to my kidneys? How come my kidneys are not working? And and then I started having this greater appreciation for life and and the life that we have. And and as I was just facing, facing death, I was like, okay, I need to make my will out. I need to... Um, you know, I was like, I was planning for, for all that, thinking that my life is about to end. And, and I was a complete emotional wreck. Like I was having panic attacks. My, my heart was started beating really, really fast. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't know what to do. I was, it was almost like 
I, I, I stopped breathing. Like I, I couldn't think I couldn't, I couldn't think or do anything. I was just almost like, like almost paralyzed with fear that what have I done to myself? And then all the naysayers in my life before when I started this journey about, oh, your, your organs are going to eat themselves. And, you know, this is really bad for your health. And all of their voices started coming in my head. And I was like, oh my God, maybe there was something to what they were saying. Like, how is it that my kidneys are failing? And then I started looking into my, um, my family history and I said okay uncle on one side and the aunt on the other side of the family they both had kidney disease maybe it's a genetic thing maybe my kidneys are naturally weak and then maybe with all this dry fasting I harmed them even more and so all this guilt was coming on me all this shame was coming on me and I was just I was just uh paralyzed I was just kind of you know, and also facing death. And I was just, I didn't know what to do. I was just completely in a shock. Like I couldn't think I couldn't do anything. Um, so, and the doctors were not helping because they couldn't tell me why either or anything that I can do. Um, and I was desperately trying to do everything I can do. Like I, you know, there was like these online, they said, well, you know, if you say take turmeric with, with uh, black pepper and you put in almond oil and you drink it with milk, like almond milk, uh, it's good for the kidneys, you know, all these different like naturopathic ways to heal the kidneys, but none of that was working. My markers were dropping and I was getting so scared. I was like, okay, I have all these summer holiday plans and I'm not going to be able to go anywhere. Like I had, I booked everything already. And I'm like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be like, like they're going to put want to put me on dialysis or something. And, and I'm going to be able to go anywhere or do anything. And I was just getting this, um, the sinking feeling in my heart. And I was like, you know what? I just um, you're like you don't appreciate life until you until you feel like it's almost gone, right? So I was trying to like starting to appreciate like okay, at least I'm still living, at least I'm not dead yet. You know, it's like <laughs> it's got to that point. Um, so, um, anyways, I had extreme anxiety, like I said, to my chest, and I remember I couldn't breathe, and I was ashamed of what I'd done to myself, and I didn't want to talk to anyone about it. I was. Um, I didn't really have anyone to talk to about it because if I told anyone about what I was going through, they'd be like, oh, obviously you should start eating. And, and I was, I was like, oh, I, I can't, I can't even talk to anyone about this. And so, um, so anyways, one day I was very disturbed and, um, I called my friend Veronica and you guys, if you've been watching my channel, uh, you know, my friend Veronica, she, I called her and I said, I told her, I said, can you, and like, I didn't, I wanted to not sound disturbed. So I said, can you do a scan on my body? Because she's, my friend Veronica, she is, she's this complete, like amazing human being that has all these spiritual abilities, all these healing abilities. And she's just incredible. So I just, I called her and I said, can you do a scan on my body? And I didn't tell her what my problem was or what I was facing or anything. I said, can you do a scan on my body and let me know? Um, if you see anything and so she's like okay so she scanned my body and she saw that my liver was being very protective of my kidney and she saw that my kidney was a little inflamed and I was like okay and this is not the, I, again I didn't tell her anything about my kidney problem so that's what she saw by scanning my body and then she did a healing on me during that session she did a healing on me and then she scanned my body again and she said that you know everything was back to normal and that um the kidneys were you know full of love so I was like okay and I was like okay okay whatever I mean I I, I didn't know what to make of that a couple of days later I, I woke up and I, I just couldn't get out of bed I was like frozen I didn't know what to do I I was just um almost in terror and I I just called her and I said can you talk and then we spoke and then she told me that in my past life I mean during the other session she also told me but she told me that in my past life uh, I had died of kidney disease and this is a past life memory that my body's having and I was like okay like I didn't know what to make of that either. I was like okay um, and then she says well you know what we're going to do we're going to heal your past life so you know I went into a meditative pose and since she went and she went into my past life and she healed my past life where I had died of kidney disease. And then she uh, came into this life that I'm living right now. And she says, okay, I'm going to do a healing session on you. And, you know, and she gave me some downloads. She did a healing session. And I was like, 
okay. And so she did that. And then I didn't make anything of it. I was like, okay, this was nice that she did a healing session. And, and then I, um, I was grateful that I had someone to talk to because, I mean, she was reassuring me that, you know, everything's going to be fine. You already healed yourself at a spiritual level. Now it's already manifested at the spiritual level. Now at the physical level, you're going to manifest it. You're going to be fine. And I was like, okay. I mean, just talking to her was just so amazing because she kind of calmed me down because I was at the point where I was just like um, panicking and I couldn't think straight. So anyway, so she's, she spoke to me and it was, it was nice speaking to her and then I just didn't make anything of what she had done. I went about my uh, my day and I one of the doctors had asked me to do a 24-hour urine test. So I said, okay, I have to do a 24-hour urine test. So I collected my urine for the whole day and then I was going to go, then I went in to, to turn my urine in. And the reason why they want to do a urine test is to see how much protein is coming out of my urine. And because if there's a lot of protein coming out, that means your kill, kidneys are not filtering the protein out. So they were wanted to, me they wanted to measure that. And so I um, was handing it over the urine sample, the, the urine container that I had collected all this urine for 24 hours and I was handing it over to them. And then they said, oh, well, this comes as a package. Part of the package is that you do the urine test and then it comes with a kidney function test. And I was like, oh, but uh, I just kind of did the kidney function test like two days ago. Uh, and then they're like, well, if you want, you can do it, but you're paying for it, you know, so you might as well just do it. And I was like, okay. So anyways, I did another kidney function test. I was like, okay, whatever, you know, I mean, it's part of the packet. So I just got another kidney function test done. And it came that evening and I looked at the test and I couldn't believe my eyes, um, but like everything was normal. Like all my kidney functions were normal. All my proteins are normal. Like everything was normal. And I was like, how is it possible that, that I was, I was almost at stage four kidney disease. Now everything's normal. Like what is, that and so I called uh, my friend and Veronica and I was like it's it's all normal and and it was like well and she's like well it could be because of the healing I did and I was like yeah of course um there was nothing else to change she had done the healing on me and and there was the instant she says you can heal instantly and and so this was like instant like I mean it was it's like she says it could take a sleep cycle for you to your body to actually feel it so I went to bed and I woke up and I turned in the urine sample and then I think it was like 24 hours later that I did the urine the the kidney function test and um I, I don't know it was it was a miracle I mean everything was normal and and I had been through such a roller coaster ride I, to the to the fact that I was facing death to now that kidney function is normal and and I don't know, it's giving me a different perspective, but the, the, but the point is, is she, that Veronica had done a session on me. And, and so that is, uh, and that is what healed me. And she says, well, what more proof does a person need? Like two days ago, I was at like almost stage four kidney disease. Two days later is perfectly normal. <laughs> and I was like, okay, this is the... Uh, so this is a miracle. Basically, she healed my body the first session. And then the second session, she healed my past. And then again, sent some healing energy to my body. And so she said it was a past life memory that I had and that I was reliving that memory and I had to get through that block. I mean, I have gone on a roller coaster ride like you wouldn't believe. Like for months, I've been going on this, oh, I'm dying, I'm dying to I'm healed. So it's it's been a crazy roller coaster ride. Like when you're facing death and instantly everything becomes all right, it's like a bit much to to kind of handle. It's like, whoa, like you almost feel like it's a cruel joke being played on you. Like, why did I go through all that? But I think the reason why we go through all that is to have a spiritual awakening because it's giving me a different perspective on life and different perspective on this journey and gratitude for all that I have and and just a maybe a better understanding of more of the spiritual perspective and past lives um, so it's been actually um, I think it's expanded my consciousness uh, to a different level and maybe this I had to go through this as a part of my breatharian journey I don't know um, but I did go through this and I'm glad it's over and um, <laughs> but I'm gonna now bring on Veronica so she can tell you her part <laughs>
<laughs> Hi everyone. Um, I told you guys about my friend Veronica who did the instant healing. So I want to introduce her to you guys uh, if you guys don't already know her. But she's this amazing spiritual multidimensional healer who's also a musician and an artist. And so here's Veronica and I want um, her to kind of tell you guys how she healed me. Yeah, okay. so Veronica, go take it away and let us know what happened. So uh, a few days ago, uh, Raki had called me and I thought we were just going to have one of our amazing chats because we we love to chat and just talk about the universe and everything in different dimensions and the pranic breatharian lifestyle. And um, I could tell she was upset and she asked me to do a scan on her. She didn't tell me anything else, um, but I could just read that she was that something was off. So I did what I do when I um, work on somebody or work with somebody, I scan them to see if I can see anything. And the energy of her liver was just like very protective. And so when I went deeper, I saw that it was the kidneys that were inflamed and the kidneys, uh, everything else in her body looked fine, but the kidneys had the issue. So then I told her what I saw and she kind of broke down and started crying and said that she was one step away from stage four kidney disease. And uh, my first thought was impossible. <laughs> it's just no. So um, knowing that that just wasn't the case because I had just read her and it, I had just scanned her and I, I would have seen that. I saw that the kidneys were inflamed, but it wasn't a physical thing. And so I, I told her, you know, I'm going to go deeper and find out. I'm going to talk to your kidneys. I, when I do a scan, scanning of somebody, I talk to the body and I talk to, um, and the body actually talks to me too. Um, it, it, I taught the, the person's spirit guides will also talk to me. And it, it's just, it really is a multi-level thing. It's not just, oh, like, going and seeing a picture it's a whole ordeal and so as I went deeper and in, into her scanning and, and uh, asked the body and the kidneys and her higher self and and her spirit guides what is this about because I know that Rocky does not have even stage one kidney disease let alone stage four and they started showing me what the issue was and it had to do with the past life that she had so I told her I got to go back and see that life and the past life that she lived she was a man who died of kidney disease and because of her pranic breatharian path as we progress on this path we go deeper and deeper in the cleansing it's just like the body heals from the outside in so the newest injuries will heal first and as you heal and heal and heal and detox it goes deeper and deeper and deeper and it, your body will heal the oldest wounds last because you really have to be strong enough not just physically but mentally emotionally spiritually to get to those deep deep root issues and that's what was happening with Rocky. And so I mentioned it to her. And it's not that she was totally against it, but she, I, I could just read her that she was like, mm, no, I, I'm not interested in that, you know. <laughs> and so when a person does that, I respect their choice. I respect them. However, if their spirit guides are telling me and if their body's telling me, oh, no, she's ready or she needs to hear this then I will try and discuss it subtly, you know, not so like, oh, this is what happened and blah, blah, blah. So I just mentioned it. I didn't, I just said in a past life, you died of kidney disease. And this is why you're having such terror is because this memory is coming up to be healed. And you're so and right. Because when you told me about it, it was like, Okay, because I'm not so familiar with past lives and how that's going to affect this life. And I was like, okay, but I'm currently having a problem. How does that have to do with my past life? So I wasn't able to make it. Like, and when you brought that up, I'm like, okay. And it was just, so you're right. There was some resistance to, to that. So yeah, sorry. And ahead. in the moment, it's understandable. You know, if somebody has um, an issue in this lifetime and they don't understand the connection to a past lifetime, 
that's like the last thing on their mind. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute, I need to deal with this five times. Right. So in that, when that happens, two healing sessions are required. So in the first session, I went ahead and did a full healing on her body, focusing on her kidneys and then her liver. And, you know, I, in my communication and my energy healing, I let the liver know that her kidneys were safe and protected. So the liver was able to relax. And then I did the healing on the kidneys and the kidneys immediately um, went from being inflamed to being full of love energy, which is what we are. We're love and energy. But that memory, it was still there and it was still needing attention. But the connection to her physical body in this lifetime was healed. And so we did that. And then I scanned her again and I told her, it's hard to put into words and explain when I scan somebody and do a reading on them. What I see is amazing. It's like every body part literally to me is a, a living being within itself. So her kidneys were completely healed physically in that first session. However, sometimes that's enough. But if a person's past life really is like, no, this is a lifetime, she's ready, it's not going to let go. So that the person has a choice. They can either keep running away and then the kidney issue would have come back or they can face it in the next session, you know, little by little when they're ready. And so we did it. Rocky felt great. She was excited. She felt relieved. And then a couple of days later, she called me again in a panic. And um, she was literally paralyzed with fear. And so this was a sign to me, okay. And I, oh, I scanned her again. And her body was perfect. There was nothing wrong with her body. So I knew that we needed to go and address her past life issue. So we did another session and our spirit guides and our higher selves are amazing and always doing everything in our highest and best, even when it doesn't appear that way on the outside, because on the outside, Rocky was falling apart again. And, you know, she was confused. She, she was doing everything she could to heal this, but she was already healed. It was the past life that was coming up. And she, it, when that happens, when we're paralyzed with fear, it's because we are trying with all our might to suppress something that's, that's gonna come up, whether we like it or not. So Rocky was able to surrender. And in her surrender, she allowed me to go back in time in, in her past life and I was able to describe this man's life and what led him to have kidney disease. And we literally went back in time and reversed that. We, we healed that lifetime. And while I was doing that, she was visualizing it. And it was amazing. It was beautiful. Um, it was such a healing event. It was beautiful how, how Veronica, you told, because there was resistance even then, but I was at such a low point in my, in this healing journey, this kidney journey of mine, that even though it was weird, I was, like you said, I was willing to surrender. And then when you said, I want you to visualize it, that kind of helped me to surrender. Cause then it's like, you were telling me a story. So I was following along. I'm like, I was in the meditation. I was closing my eyes and following along with whatever you were saying and, and you know, how you were, how you were describing the person that I was in my past life and all that. So it was really good to, to visualize that. So it was, it was a good thing that you told me to visualize it. So so yeah, and what you told me about that person, it was like, you know, it's almost like I, I, I felt for, for the person I was in my past life, you know, how that person was suffering and all that, because I myself was suffering right now. And so I can sympathize with, with that person as well. So yeah, so that was good. And then, yeah. Okay. Was, okay. And this healing came because Rocky was willing and ready. A healer can do everything in her or his power to heal somebody. But if that person's not ready or if they're blocking it, or if they have too much fear and too much resistance, then 
it's they're not going to be healed. So Rocky, she surrendered to the process. She went back in time with me and she allowed her self to be healed. The soul is infinite. The soul, we don't just live in one lifetime. People, you know, a lot of people think that the soul is inside the body and that's not true. The soul is infinite. The soul is amazing. The soul can be living several incarnations at once. So Rocky, in her chronic breatharian path she was beyond excited and i was so excited for her and not very many people are at her level and it's it's such a joy to work with somebody who is so willing to create miracles in their life you know and that's a joy for me that i can help somebody heal a past life and then totally turn their present life to create a miracle Veronica really opened my eyes to um, past lives. I mean, I didn't know how past lives affect this life. And it was so weird for me. I wasn't exposed to all that. And so when when it actually happened to me where it was an instant healing. So I think in, in the video, I had I told you guys that I had to do a 24-hour urine test. And part of that test was that I had to um, get a kidney function test again, which is just two days later. And two days before I was almost at stage four kidney disease. And, and then um, anyways, I turned in my, my urine that I had collected for 24 hours. And they said, well, a part of that is a kidney function test. And I was like, okay, well, since I've already paid for it, I'll go ahead and get it done. And so I did. And I was just, and, and they sent it to me. I did it in the morning. They sent it to me in the evening. And I was like, oh my God, how can it be that my kidneys are perfect now? So I, um, I immediately called Veronica when I got the results. And I said, I mean, I, I was like, can you not believe it? And Veronica knew instantly what I was going to tell her because she can sense the, my voice and all that. So. I was so excited when you called and I was like, oh my gosh, is this going to be good news or bad news? And the minute I heard Ducky's voice, I knew it was good news. And we were like squealing like little girls. We were so excited. <laughs> I'm serious. It was, it was the most, like I was telling Veronica, it was like going on a roller coaster ride. I think Veronica, you were saying, I like, it was going, it's like going on a roller coaster ride. And Veronica's like, yeah, it's like going on a roller coaster ride without a seatbelt on. You don't know. It was, it was crazy. It was like, I was near death. And I was like, oh no, it was like so many ups and downs in, in the, that one or like two months that I was going through this. It was, it was crazy. And, and, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. This has been a miracle. And I was telling Veronica, and Veronica's like, this is a miracle. I'm like, yeah, I mean, who heals? Like two days ago, I got a test that showed me that I was, you know, almost stage four kidney. And then two days later, I'm healed, like completely normal. I mean, how does that happen? I mean, it's a miracle. So Veronica, she she performed miracles. She is a miracle. And she performed a miracle on me. And I was just, I don't know. I, I, I don't have enough gratitude for 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 Veronica being in my life and doing you know what she does and and our friendship and and just I don't know it's she's such a gift for me and so thank you Veronica for for doing all that you've done for me it just you don't know it was the lowest point and I was going through thinking about writing my will and you know it, I was like okay I need to prepare to die now because I don't know if I want to do dialysis right and I don't want to be going through all that so so thank you so much for all that you did uh Thanks. That is not well, enough. I appreciate all that, that that you do to in this world to to help humanity and and to to help others and to help me. And I don't know. You're just you're just absolutely amazing. And and I don't know if you guys know, but Veronica is an amazing singer as well. She has oh. beautiful songs that she writes and she sings herself. She's an artist and and she's an incredible, incredible human being. Oh, I have all the gratitude in my heart for you, Veronica. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, so what, what you were going through, Rocky, was a spiritual death and a spiritual awakening. And what happens when someone is at your level and they go back to heal a past life that is affecting them in this life, that literally creates a spiritual awakening. And so every time somebody heals a past life that they've carried with them into the this lifetime it expands their consciousness and it is truly a gift because it doesn't go away 
people have a choice. You can either heal it in this lifetime or take it with you in your next lifetime. So people may have basic questions. So I don't, I mean, I'm just going to think what questions people have and I'll, and I'll, and I'll ask you. So, so maybe people may have questions like, do you think that it is a breatharian lifestyle that caused her kidneys to fail? I mean, that could be a, a question that someone can ask. Um, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, that was all past life. Okay. All past life. When I scanned Rocky's body both times, the first and the second time, the first time I knew it was past life. She, it, she is so healthy there that and I I know and I and I've I've known you for a few years and I've seen you fast I mean you you've you've done several three-day dry fast you've done a seven-day dry fast you've little by little you've upgraded your liquids you've 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 done everything that you know uh somebody on this path can do to, to continue to upgrade their system and no if Rocky's kidneys were damaged it first of all it wouldn't be because of her lifestyle second of all I would have seen it in the scan and she is like the picture of pristine health in her fear when she was um sharing her fear with me about oh my god you know did I do this and I said absolutely not and I we basically talked about too, like, no, you've done everything right. You know, you're so healthy and strong and fit. And so, yeah, it just, and, and I kept telling her, no, that's crazy. It, there's no way you're sick. There's nothing wrong with your kidneys. And you know? that was so reassuring to me when I'm in my low points. And I'm like, every time I spoke to you, Veronica, you're such a gift. Every time I spoke to you, I felt like a better because I'd be paralyzed with fear. Like, you know, looking at these numbers and, 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 and honestly, it was just numbers because when I went to the doctors, they were like, are you having this problem? Are you having fatigue? Are you having swollen, like, you know, feet? And they have all these things that they would ask me, are you having high blood pressure? Are you having diabetes? I'm like, no, no, no. Everything was no. And, and they were also confused about why am I having kidney issues if everything's like normal? So another thing that I kept explaining to Rocky was that her terror I mean really it was terror the reason why she was feeling this paralyzing fear was those were feeling memories from the past life they were not from numbers on a test when something happens to a person that doesn't make sense it's not in alignment with their lifestyle it's not it doesn't make any sense of what what their life is going on usually that's a sign that a past life is trying to come up and why do we carry past lives with us into our next lifetime because we didn't get to resolve it or heal whatever happened and so all of her fear her paralyzing fear and panic wasn't about this lifetime it was she was remembering what it felt like to have kidney disease in that past life and to die of it that's paralyzing fear that's it's uh, terrifying. And so I kept telling her that this is your feelings are valid, but they're not about this lifetime. They're about that lifetime. So if we can go back and heal that lifetime, it's going to resolve your feelings in this lifetime. And that's exactly what happened. So another question someone would have is that, okay, if it was of, of a past life and it's not of this life, then what if she just kind of never got the test done and never found out that she had kidney disease. I would say to that, that your kidneys were inflamed and that that inflammation was a reaction to that past life. So if you had never gotten the blood test, eventually you would have started to feel that and it would have manif it would have kept manifesting until you went to go check it out because you would have known something's wrong. This isn't normal. So, so, so are you, so are you saying that it would have then manifested in this life that I would actually have then kidney like disease? No, not necessarily. You okay. would, the sim because the symptoms weren't about this lifetime and they weren't about your lifestyle. They were memories. 
We don't just have memories in our mind. Our body has memories. I, because I had died in my last life of kidney disease, would I have then in this life died of kidney disease because I didn't resolve the issue? No, no. no. Your kidneys may have bothered you. You would not, not necessarily. What happens is when you are on a spiritual path, especially the type of spiritual path you're on, you're a lot of people, there are a lot of people on spiritual paths who don't take care of their bodies. There are a lot of people who take care of their bodies that aren't on a spiritual path. So you take care of your mind, your body, and your heart and your soul. You, when you get to a point where you are, have that level of awareness, and it is a process, you know, as you're on this breatharian path, you start becoming awakened in many areas of your life. And when that happens, you have your consciousness is expanded. And the more that we expand our consciousness, the more that that shines a light or allows past life issues to come up to be healed. Because a person literally has to be strong enough emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. Not always. I mean, past life stuff can come up and maybe for people who aren't that healthy, but we're talking specifically about somebody on the pranic breatharian lifestyle. When you're ready, when a person is ready, their spirit guides are going to guide them and they're going to either bring them to the right teacher or, or they're going to, they're going to bring the right person in their life that can help them or whatever that person needs to heal. You know, they're, they're going to, help them along that journey of healing say someone is on this path um on the breatharian path and things come up for them and they don't they don't really know but they and they don't have an amazing friend like i do who can help them through it and they are and they don't really know what's well, what can a person do if they're on this path or kind of dabbling with this path and some something like this comes up what can they what can they do? Well, what I did when my body started developing cancer, this was when I ate meat and everything years ago. The first thing I did was I did Western medicine. Well, they were killing me. They were literally killing me by all of the treatments and, you know, cutting, just wanting to do surgery and cut everything out. And finally I said, no, I'm dying. I can't do this anymore. And back then, because I was eating meat and because it just me personally, I'm not saying that people who eat meat don't have a connection with their spirit guides, but because I was eating meat and because I had shut my spirit guides out and I had shut that part of my life out for so long, purposefully shut it out because I just wanted to be normal. You know, I didn't want to live in a world where I saw spirits all the time and, you know, did all the things that I do, multi travel multidimensionally. And, you know, I just, I didn't want to, acknowledge that part of my life. And so that was the opening for me to start listening to my spirit guides again. That that was the gift. The cancer in my body was a gift that allowed me to embrace my spirituality again. And so I asked my spirit guides, I need help. Bring me somebody who will help me because I'm dying and I don't want to leave my daughter without a mother. And they did. And I got my first spiritual teacher, a uh, healer. Her name is Alexandra. And she was amazing. She saved my life. I would tell somebody, pray or meditate, manifest the right person to come and help you. Now, if a person is expecting somebody to just heal them magically, it's not going to happen doesn't work that way. You have to be willing to do what it takes to heal. And because I didn't want to leave my daughter without a mother. So at first I became a vegetarian and that was in the year 2000. And then four years later, I became a raw vegan and I just kept upgrading my diet and I reawakened my sixth sense and my psychic intuition. And I reconnected with my spirit guides and the rest is history. So yeah, if a person is willing to do the work, will and not just wanting to take a pill and not just expecting some spiritual heal, healer to wave a magic wand and take all their problems away, that's not going to work. But if they're willing to really sit with their feelings, to sit with their pain, to be present for it, 
because really that is all it takes. It's not complicated. It's, it may be the most challenging thing that a person will ever experience, but it's very simple. And it's just learning to be present and stop running away. Stop expecting other people to fix your problems. Gain a relationship first and foremost with yourself and your spirit guides. And when you do that and you learn how to communicate with them and trust them, that is the true path to healing and to freedom. You're amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time and energy to be here with me today to talk about all the healing that you did on me. And it has saved my life. And I just cannot thank you enough for, for taking me through this and holding my hand and being someone that I can call and talk to and, and, and just being there for me. So, so my gratitude and respect for all that you do. Thank you so much, Veronica. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do want to also say, I want everyone to know as sweet and amazing as Lucky is, she was willing. Now she had resistance, but that's normal. That's okay. She was present every time I told her every, you know, do this Rocky and, you know, just be present. And I would explain, she, she did everything, you know, she, she was willing, she was willing to show up for herself. She was willing to be present with her fear with, let's call it terror, because literally you had a spiritual death. You literally faced death. That's what it felt like. Yeah, Regardless of what anybody else on the outside looking in might think she yeah. faced death. She, you know, it, it was a past life death, but it, when you're having a past life memory, it feels real. It's as if you don't have to have the picture memory, but you have all of the feelings of what that person went through. And that is why it's so terrifying that it, that you can't even move. And I, I mean, I'm speaking from personal experience too. I've had several spiritual deaths and spiritual awakenings in my lifetime. But I got through them because I of my spirit guides. They they taught me how to be present, and and they sent Alexandra to me, and she 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 did for me what you know what I yes. did for Aki. Yes, yes. So you know, thank yourself too, and and be in gratitude for how amazing you are. Because so many people, I stopped doing one-on-one -on -one sessions because I just, I could not in good faith accept people's money when I saw that they were so unwilling to do the work. I just couldn't do it. Right. So now I, I only work with people who I know are willing to, to show up and be present and face their fears, you know, and, and, and I can tell when somebody just wants me to snap a finger and heal them. And I, I can't work with people like that. It doesn't work. Yeah. So Veronica has a YouTube channel. What I'll do is in the, in the description, I'll go ahead and leave um, her YouTube channel so you can watch her videos because she has amazing videos that she puts out on spirituality. And also she's an amazing musician. She, so she has uh, some of her songs out there. These songs she has written herself and actually sang the songs herself. So it's amazing. I was listening to your songs and a friend of mine was with me and I said, what do you think of the song? And he was like, oh my God, this song is so beautiful. He didn't know that it was, it was that something that you did. <laughs> He thought it was some professional who had like, I mean, not to say you're not a professional, but he thought it was like something that I was like playing from like, you know, one of those Spotify channels or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, so, but amazing. Check out her, her YouTube channel. She's amazing. She does amazing work. So yeah, I'll leave it in the description below. Mm -hmm.